Cyclone warnings in effect on the Kimberley coast of Australia. Cyclone 18S has been designated by a joint typhoon warning centre but we're still waiting on an official name from the Bureau of Meteorology who has still yet to pull the trigger. 12.7 degrees south, 125.5 degrees east is its current position which puts it off the coast of the Kimberley region in Western Australia. Uh, as of 8pm uh, Australian Western Standard Time, this was the latest on this storm. 45 miles per hour winds, 75 kilometers per hour, pressure of 999 millibars moving west-southwest at around 22 kilometers per hour, 14 miles per hour. A tropical storm by all accounts and here is its current position displayed on the map with its wind field extending out up to 90 statute miles to the southeastern side of the storm and is getting close to around 150 kilometers there. Uh, distances from land it's 209 kilometers from Kalamburu where warnings are in effect now, 355 from Kupang on Timor, out of uh, Timor, 549 from Derby, 678 from Broome, and 1116 from Port Hedland. You saw there those watches and warnings, watches extending uh, from Cockatoo Island southwards uh, there as well for a short stretch. So those watches and warnings are probably going to expand as time goes on as this storm gradually uh, meanders towards the southwest. Primary hazards, difficult one to say which one is the worst hazard now, but flash flooding is still what we're going with along some coastal areas of the Kimberley where we could see uh, up to 300 millimeters of rain possible. Now, of course, we know it's going to make a strong landfall further south and that is becoming a concern, although it is an extremely sparse area of land along 80 mile beach, high rainfall, storm surge and extreme winds are possible along that area. And here is the forecast track and wind field, what we expect at the moment. Looking into the next uh, seven days there, you can see that wind field expanding, the storm stalling a little bit and then smashing into the coast there, right along 80 Mile Beach, uh, far away really from any major uh, settlements. And then it scurries along to the southeast and dissipates as it's getting towards South Australia there. Uh, New South Wales so interesting to see how long it spends inland before it actually dies off completely or how far it travels. Uh, satellite estimates are actually a little bit higher than what we're going with right now ADT getting close to 70 miles per hour already but I suspect that they probably don't have the center nailed down properly. Uh, most of the agencies going with 45, 50 miles an hour from the JTWC and as you see on that cone there from the Bureau of Meteorology they are expecting a category 4 on the Australian uh, scale in the next three days. And here is the JTWC's forecast, they're expecting a category 4 on the Saffir Simpson scale, that would be category 5 AU. Um, 130 knots, 150 miles per hour, and then landfall there, um, not far from Port Hedland, and then moving inland, um, still as a strong cyclone. Here's what the GFS model makes of it. So we expect that the storm will continue southwest, was at first a little bit of a stall, just off the coast there, and then slamming into the coastline, as you'd expect, and then continuing southeastwards, well inland, as you can see once again, uh, straight through towards the southeastern part of the country. Are we expecting a landfall? Well, it looks like now it's going to be probably the 13th of April in the evening, although this has been changing a little bit, and to be honest, I think it's been accelerating a little bit on the forecast. <clears throat> so it could be the case that we might get it a little bit sooner and it might hug the coast a little bit more. There is a simulated radar indications showing you the structure of the storm and quite small actually, certainly compared to the initial forecast runs, they actually have the storm being quite a bit larger at the same intensity. Uh, but on this occasion now, it looks like it is going to be smaller and that makes sense. They usually, when we do get strong storms in this area, they usually are quite compact. And there it is once again moving through uh, the great central part of Australia there and towards the southeast. And here is the actual rainfall expectations now over the next seven days. There are quite a few areas on the extremities there, the coastlines, that are expecting high amounts of rainfall, but they're not 
uh, not widespread really, uh, but a few areas there that were expecting 10 inches of rainfall, that would be 250 millimeters. And of course the landfall zone could be in for quite a lot there as well, although it does taper off quite quickly after the storm moves inland, possibly due to the terrain, um, or at least the dryness of the region usually. And there we are looking at up to 10 inches, but look at out at sea there, could be up to 30 inches for the fish, uh, but not along the coast there. Uh, so interesting to see that high amounts of rain though nonetheless and rapid rainfall can lead to flash flooding. Sea surface temperatures along the coastline, these are probably a little bit conservative, They when we think they're warmer than this, uh, but that's indicating 30 degrees Celsius, but I'm pretty sure there's one or two spots of 32 degrees Celsius near the coastline where this storm is headed, and that's one of the reasons why we're so concerned about the forecast track. Of course, the GTWC surprised everyone yesterday when they went with their initial forecast calling for a Category 5 on the Sapphire Simpson scale. They've backed off a little bit, but that still remains um, a small possibility. You can take a look at the Force 13 website and look and uh, stay up to date with all the satellite imagery. We are also running an automated stream right now on the Force 13 YouTube channel, so make sure you check that out. But here's the latest satellite imagery. We believe the center is a little bit to the east of where all of that convection is and all that mid-level um, swirling around. So it's we don't think it's stacked properly, and that's why it, the intensity is slightly limited right now. Probably due to wind shear, maybe a little bit of dry air in there as well. Uh, but as you can see, most of that convection is displaced westwards southerly as well, and you can see some of that overland too. So quite a lot of rainfall probably occurring along the border between um, Northern Territory and Western Australia, as well as further west over there as well along a lot of those islands so a lot to take in right now with this storm it is on the ramp upwards and it could be a very intense storm <laughs> 